So we're, we're sitting in perhaps one of the, the three or four most iconic rooms in racing. Uh, it's not the steward's room <laughs> at some racetrack. We're at Siebkin's. Uh, maybe the most storied bar in all of motor racing, and, and with us is Guy Hobbs. And uh, I, I was trying to think that uh, the last time you and I were together, we were hoisting one at Tristan and Lori's wedding. Oh, my God. That's, ah! a, that's a long time ago. I know. The earth was just forming a crust. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's also the site. Yeah, so, it was the site of the, the the wedding was right here. The, well, the wedding was right here, but previous to the wedding, Calvin Fish. Yes. Of Calvin Fish racing fame. Yeah, and he does he does commentary and uh, color on. Yes, he does on TV. But before that, he was at the wedding. Yes. And I will tell this Calvin Fish story, and if Calvin. Here's about this. No, I think it's good. He, we, we were wearing, he was wearing a very shiny pair of leather shoes. And we were in a little cottage just on the lake over here. And we were upstairs, and Calvin had a gin and tonic in his hand. Mm -hmm. Odd. Sorry? Odd. Yes, very odd. <laughs> well, he slipped. It, wasn't, it was not a drunken slip. No. But these leather shoes on this flooring, the carpet, but he slipped. And he managed to go down the entire flight of stairs on his bum. <laughs> but in only, as only Calvin Fish could do, and an Englishman with a gin and tonic, <laughs> did not spill one drop of that gin and tonic. Got to the bottom and said, oh, that kind of hurt. Ah. And not one splash of gin anyway. Uh -huh. That was many, many moons ago. Yeah, that, that was a long time ago. I'm, I'm going to guess 87. or eight, maybe 80, Yeah, maybe 80, 87. 86, 87, yeah. somewhere in there. Uh, it was before I went to Alfa Romeo and before you went to prison. Yes. Uh, <laughs> luckily, I'm now out of prison. I, I, it wasn't actually prison, it was jail. Okay. There's I'm a sorry. difference, apparently. Yeah, uh, that's true. So what the, what the heck are you doing now? Well, and now, I, as a classic statement, I'm in between jobs. Ah. Yes. Okay. Uh, so I'm experimenting with Vero Beach in the winter. Yeah. So I should be going shortly. And here in Elkhart Lake in the summer. Well, that's, that's not a bad thing. You're, uh, the family keeps places both places. They do. They... they Bought a, well, we used to come to Elkhart so often, Dad finally said we sure. should buy a place, so we bought a place. Dad is David Hobbs. Yes. And the story behind the buying is he was actually sitting right here. And one of the girls at work here said, you know, they're auctioning off a house up the road. And Dad said, oh, I'd like to see that. I've never seen a house auction. So he went up to the corner, and there was Bill Kane, mm -hmm. who was a local real estate guy standing there at the podium, looking at his watch, and, his watch, and only Dad there. And Bill <laughs> said, well, <laughs> the auction is, starts at noon. I ha and because it's a public auction, I have to publicly auction the house. Uh -huh. And Dad looks and goes, well, there's no one here to auction the house too. It, it's a public auction. I have to legally, publicly auction it. And apparently went from a perfectly normal talking voice. No reserve. No, no yeah, exactly. Yeah. And went straight into his bidding. Do I hear anybody bid? And dad, <laughs> dad looking around going, there's no one here, Bill. It's you and me. And Bill's like, it's a public auction. I have to publicly auction it. Do I hear $10,000 or whatever the money was? Yeah. And so to shut him up, Dad said, sure. <laughs> and then dad came back. To finish his sandwich in between, and so the mum said, well, Where were you? Because I think I just bought a house, so <laughs> that's how we end up with a house in Elkhart Lake. And Bill Kane to this day is still selling real estate and still auctioning, he's houses. still auctioning, yes. Yeah. Well, it, it really has become uh, 
I don't know. Would you say that uh, Florida is the primary home or the secondary no, home? That would in... be the secondary home. Although now that dad's older and he's lost, he lo in, when it gets cold, he loses feeling in his hands. Uh -huh. So he likes to spend as much time as he can in Florida because he doesn't like the cold and this is way, sure. way too cold for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but for me, Alcott is primary home. Has been for... Nine, since 1980. Yeah, for, for a long, long time. Yeah, when I came on a quick trip. And you decided to stay? 43 years later, yes. Yeah. So, but I've, I've seen a lot in those 43 years. Is, is there a sport that has more stories to it than motor racing? Yeah, I would say there is. Horse racing. Well, that, I, I, that could be. The, the, the stories that the stable girls and the Warm-up jockeys can tell you, uh, quite <laughs> amazing. Uh, uh, I should say horse racing in England. Oh, okay. And luckily, we live right next to a horse racing stable. Yeah. So we had an endless supply of young girls that, when they'd finished grooming the horses. They're called mares. The horses are. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. I, hmm. Yeah. Sorry. We didn't call the girls mares. So. <laughs> But the, the horse, horse racing definitely has some amazing <laughs> I did. stories. I'm going to work for the British Tourism Bureau. Oh, you should like <laughs> a good idea. Yeah. Take up horse racing. Yeah. I, okay, then I will posit that perhaps second only to horse racing in England. Yeah. Any particular county? No. It's, okay, it's all good. Over. It's all over. Is there anything that stirs up more stories than motor racing. Probably not. Yeah, I'm, I'm Only thinking. because there's so much, I mean, sure, baseball or, or travel, and, but it's all domestic. The thing about the motor racing, it's worldwide. And yeah. You get people, you get a guy in here, he's from New Zealand, sitting next, talking to the guy from Sheboygan or whatever, and, and then all, obviously all the cars and then all the tracks worldwide that everybody runs on. And so, I mean, it's a, it's a tight-knit community. And of it course, is. everybody knows everybody else. Most, most everybody knows most everybody. And there's always somebody that they know that owes the money from 1972. <laughs> yeah, we oh, never did pay that. You're among the few that I don't think owes me any money. Uh, no, as far as I know, I don't. No, I think we're clear. I think we're clear on that. Uh, Lewis still owes me money. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, he hasn't got any, so. <laughs> which is which is the other part of motor racing stories is yeah. that whether somebody owes you money or not, he doesn't have any. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Well, yeah. speak to the right. sponsor. We're here in Elkhart Lake, arguably one of the the three or four uh, most famous tracks in the United States. There was a big push uh, two years ago, perhaps three years ago where uh, the FIA was talking about adding uh, another race. This was before uh, the Miami race and also before the Las Vegas race in right. Form Formula One. And uh, there, were, there was a lot of social media chatter about, uh, about Elkhart Lake being that site. And it had been explored before, but, but I kept saying, don't do it. Uh, Hell no. Uh, just because, A, they would have to change so much about the track to, to bring it to FIA. Well, I can tell you, in 1990 something, yeah. when they were trying to get Formula One here the first time, mm -hmm. and Bernie, someone at the track, or on the board, they got a hold of Bernie Eccleston. Mm -hmm. And they said, how much would it be to... I think it was John Hill. Could have been. Yeah. So how much would it be to have a Formula One race at Road America? Mm -hmm. And Bernie Eccleston said, a million dollars. So they said, well, that's not too bad, you know, a million dollars. Well, the million dollars to get Bernie to come from, to look at the track. That wasn't for the race. That was just to get Bernie to come and look at it. And obviously, he never did come and look at the track. But I know from speaking to all the racers I know and all the racers that come here, they, it's everyone's favorite track. 
It is. Uh, 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 it, it's some of the bigger. I remember when Tom Christensen came here with Audi mm -hmm. back in nineties. He loved the track, but he didn't like. Uh, he had a lot of complaints about the safety and runoffs and everything else. And of course, at that time, we hadn't seen anything like those Audis in mm -hmm. Road American. So there's not plenty of runoff, 50 feet there. Sure. He's like, yeah, I'm doing 210 miles an hour. I need more than 50 feet of grass. Yeah. I need, and then, and then all the safer barriers and everything yeah. else. Um, it, track wise, it's great. I mean, of course, for Formula One, the village of Elkhart Lake could never. Support it wouldn't them. support it. Yeah, because but yeah. they, they have a minimum. You have to have within a X certain amount of hotel yeah. rooms within a fifteen mile radius or something, yeah. and restaurants that are open twenty four hours, not closing at eight o'clock or whatever, so that when the crews get done at nine o'clock at night, right. they got somewhere they can go and eat, and not room service. They they have to have a restaurant they can go to. And there are people who are who are saying. Well, there, there's uh, the American Club in Sheboygan, and I say, you don't really get this. No. <laughs> you know, it's, it's much, much bigger than, than that. Yes, because uh, the American Club in Sheboygan would be great for 10 teams. Yeah. The Super 8 in Sheboygan would not be good for the other 10 teams. <laughs> no. Well, perform better. Get more uh, points. Oh, well, yes. So... Uh, Obviously, we'd all love to see Formula One. And, and of course, what, I don't think I would. Last year or two years ago, two years ago, for the vintage weekend, we had the old Formula One race. Mm -hmm. And I was actually working out at the golf course, just sitting there listening to the sound of these Formula, old vintage Formula One cars go around. I was like, oh my God, I've never that, heard that it. That was musical. It was musical. And um, I went out on the next day and watched them race. And it, I just these are old cars, obviously. But I mean, just yeah. To but see they them. were V10s, V12s. Yeah, and uh, the, the noise. 16s is, and is concerning. Oh, I have a question for you. But but massive RPM and, and the sounds that were great. Uh You as, a, as an Englishman. Yes. Uh, I always I always hear on Formula One broadcasts, things are either massive. Or they are mega. Yes. And I'd like to know which, on the scale of uh, bigness, is massive bigger than mega? No, mega are they bigger. interchangeable? Are they, or. Mega is bigger than massive. Mega bigger yeah. than massive. But massive is big. Yeah. But, but mega. But mega is, well, it's obviously mega. Yeah. <laughs> It's, uh, it's bigger than massive. But you do hear it a lot on the Formula One broadcast. Yes, yes, we do. They always have a massive crash. Absolutely. Which means the tyre went that. off the track a little bit. As a matter of fact, could, could we have a, a moment of, uh, of silence for Mr. Croft, who uh, is complaining that he has to work too much this year? Yeah, the poor chap. Just a moment. That's enough. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Poor chap having to work so much and having to get paid so much. To yes. Do that work. Yeah. Yeah. That's the point. I couldn't believe that he was whining about it like that. Yeah. Uh, we have so many new markets and so many places to go, and the schedule is so crowded. I don't think that, you know, I'm going to take three races off. There's, you know. Well, I can tell him. You know, there's the Lou Gehrig story, which you don't know about because you're an Englishman. Well, I know the Lou Gehrig story, but okay. the Crofty's mistake taking three races off is there's about 300,000 people ready to take his position. Exactly. And his, what he needs to worry about is the next guy that comes in is better than him. Exactly. And so when ITV or Sky Sports will say, I tell you what, don't bother coming back because you need who's these counseling three, this you guy? need these three weekends off. Who's counseling? Right. Him? I'm sure he's got a mega manager of some sort. Oh, yeah. A mega. A mega manager. No, not a massive manager, but he's well, a, I think he could only be massive. No. I I think anybody with that level of stupidity could not be mega. He could only be massive. Massive, maybe. Yeah. yeah. What happens if you know, hey, you know what? This guy's a lot better than the Croft. Well, and they're going to get someone in 
that's either an ex Formula One driver, yeah, and they'll pay him vast amount, not mega, but vast amounts of money to do the one weekend, and they'll go, well, hold on, yeah, why don't you? And plus, he's it'll be someone who's recently out of Formula One, uh-huh. and so they know what they're talking about too, yeah. And I mean, Croft has never actually driven the Formula One car, no. So these guys will come in and say, well, actually, when you can feel this. In his defense, there's a difference between a play-by-play guy and a, a color. R- there is, yes, yeah, but it helps if the, uh, if the... If if you get both, right, it would be mega. Yeah, so that would be mega. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, you, but I worked with um, Danny Sullivan. Who at, I worked with at, at Alpha. At ESPN on the... And I can quite clearly say that Danny Sullivan is possibly the worst TV <laughs> race announcer there. Are. <laughs> not now he's not. He, cause he, then, he came to ESPN first, then he went to ABC and uh-huh. worked with Paul Page. But when I worked, when, when it, it was basically his first two races he'd ever done. And it, it, wasn't, it, it wasn't good. Okay, thanks, Danny. We're actually talking about the race, not you. And... Can you keep it? Like so, under so five it, it was uh, kind of like. A, a but it was better than when I worked with Roberto Guerrero, who <laughs> barely spoke English. That didn't go down too well oh, either. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Here, we had Roberto driving for us. Yes. At Alpha, we took all the old Alpha and Alpha drivers. It was very confusing for me because I spoke Spanish and I was learning Italian, uh, and we had Brit. Uh, chassis engineers right. from March. Yeah. We had Italian electronics guys and engine guys, and then I had a Colombian driver. Right. So it it was like a mini UN. Oh yeah, it would have been. Uh, all the all the time. Who was the chef? I did a lot of it. Oh well, there you go. I did a lot of it. I, I used to enjoy that, but we we flew in a lot of chefs as well from uh, from Italy. Uh, uh, Giorgio Pianta, who was the racing manager. Right, yeah. Giorgio was a uh, Formula... Uh, I, th- I think he drove Formula One a couple of times, but he was uh, much more famous for rallying with yes. La- with Lancia. Yeah. And he had a buddy of his from Alessandria who was just enamored with not only the United States, but with Giorgio's involvement in the team. And he used to love to fly over to cook for us. Ah. And uh, yeah, it it was the hot hospitality center for uh, for all race weekends. Right, yeah. It it was phenomenally good. I got to go here. I know it's your dad. Yes. But... David Hobbs, Steve uh, Matchett, and Varsha. Boy, irreplaceable. It, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you, it doesn't get much better than that. I enjoy Martin Brundle's pit walks, but that's about as much as I enjoy Martin Brundle. Uh, and I'm obviously he's, a, he's been whining lately too. He has been whining lately. Yeah. And, and of course, the the classic one was in I think it was Miami. Last year, <laughs> and he kept walking by. <laughs> I forget who it was, but he kept walking by. And go, who is that guy? It was like, <laughs> who is that? It was DJ Khaled or something. It's, 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 it's someone very famous. Yes. Like, well, I don't even know who you are, but uh, yeah. Well, it's, it's certainly no Danica Patrick. Well, no. Yeah. Uh, she's one of the top interviewees, interviewers. So, interviewee. how about those Packers? I mean, I can tell you this much about the Packers. Because of all our friends from England that have come over here, there's a pub in London that they all go to every Sunday. Really? And, and they probably have the largest Packer gathering anywhere outside of Wisconsin uh, in the world. And they have Packer Sundays. They all dress in Packer outfits. Uh-huh. And... Um, it's, a, it's not called a Packer Bar, but it, they caught, they changed the name of the pub uh-huh. on Sundays. It's the it's the Wisconsin Packer Backers Association. Oh, that's fine. Packer Backer Association of Wisconsin or something. When when uh, Monza rolls around, 
they're uh, both uh, uh, Jay Weinberger and uh, Rick Mancuso do club uh, events. They're the two Ferrari dealers in, in the Chicago area. Right. And they, and they have wonderful events to, as, as watch parties for Ferrari. Uh, it would be nice to have something more to cheer about. Yeah. But, uh, but once again, the, uh, the food is great. I said, and I told him, Rick, you know, one time, you know, why don't you not tell anybody and serve like Mexican food one night sure. or, or Spanish, <laughs> Spanish food for sides? Yeah. And uh, that could be interesting. Or you, you could, uh, uh, I, I, I don't know that there's a Monegasque cuisine specifically. I, w I would I suggest so. probably more French but but it's right there in the Côte d'Azur, so you're mixing up France and Italy because you've got Ventimiglia, Nice, Saint-Tropez, Monaco. Uh, but I, I I said it would really be a great goof to to not have Italian food. Right. Yeah. It would be fun. Serve McDonald's or something. Oh uh, no. Yeah. No, no. I th I think with the. Every three to four hundred thousand dollar car that you get, you might get more than a Big Mac. Ah, uh, okay. probably, yeah. You know, that's, I that's would think it. so. Uh, are you involved in the car business in the in the Honda business? Not, at all? no. Well, I drive a Honda. Well, <laughs> does that count? Of course it does. Oh, okay, yeah. Of course. Uh, I am no longer no. Well, the, we sold the dealership. Uh, oh, you did? Yes. Okay. About. Um, a year and a half ago, or two years ago. Uh -huh. um, so, someone came in with an offer. So Dad said, well, I'm 83. My uh -huh. brother's 61. And he said, should we take this offer? At which point, they both immediately sat down and said, we, we already took the offer. Yeah. My third, I, there was no consideration about, well, let's see what Guy thinks about this whole thing. So, I was just told <laughs> we no longer. It's now a van. But you're, the, but you're the youngest son. I am. I know. I'm the so wise one. You don't get a vote. No, I don't. This is this is like being uh, 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 Prince Harry versus uh, Prince uh, uh, William. William. Thank yes. You. But now the Van Horns operate David Hobbs Honda. Nice family. Very nice family. From, uh, from right here in town. Yeah, and I see them in town all the time. And yeah. I, I will often say to them. Don't, yeah. Don't they forget, they are very nice. Don't people. my third. Really? Yeah, and, and then they said, well, you can bring your car in for service and we'll charge you a regular rate. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so, I think that puts them up to 12 dealerships in, in the area now. So. The eternal argument, discussion, people at loggerheads uh, is not actually whether beans belong in Chile, but it's, it's actually Formula One versus IndyCar. Both have fairly similar results. Uh, you're going to see mostly some of the same guys up front yeah. uh, that, that you do in both series. What would you do were you in charge of F1? If you're Domenicali or if uh, uh, Mohammed Ben Salam. And I'd I, and take the money and run. <laughs> Oh, so you want to be Bernie? Uh, yeah, absolutely, yes. <laughs> Who doesn't want to be Bernie? Yeah. Uh, as far as Formula One, I, I mean, they, they've tried changing and tweaking and everything to try and make it more fan friendly. Mm -hmm. I mean, the number one they could, way they can make it more fan friendly is not charge a thousand dollars for a ticket to go and see the damn thing, uh, and then open it up like they do here with IndyCar. Open up the paddock, open up the uh, paddock area so that you can actually get close to the car and see the car that you've paid a thousand dollars. You don't want to see it like that. You want to Tuck, look at tucked it. Tucked away in a garage where it's. Yeah, and you can. And then, I mean, I'm not, but there are people that are like, oh, look at that engineering involved in that. And that's not my mm -hmm. thing. But they would love to see it up close. Don't I think you? that there are people like that who uh, uh, predominantly 
uh, have their pants around their ankles at three o'clock in the morning in mommy's basement who study things like that. Yeah. But but I would say that uh, most of uh, of racing fans are more into the the, the gestalt of racing. R yes. Than yeah. than the minutia. And I think a lot of the people are enamored by the not so much the car or the engine or if it's a V12 or a V10. Yeah, but they're enamored by the fact that there's this guy they're talking to at Subway that's four foot two, mm -hmm. but in an hour from now, he's going to be doing 220 miles an hour around the Indianapolis Speedway. Like, mm -hmm. And yet the guy, and then he'll get out of the car and go back to his Subway sandwich. Yeah, he's in the mug and bun. Or the mug and bun, yes. Yes, that's another iconic place. We should, we, should, we should do something on, on well, maybe iconic we should do spots. A, maybe we should do a tour. We'll have Steve Zocchi pay for it. Yes. And we'll do a tour of iconic, iconic North spots American. in racing. And the Mug and Bun is a drive-through or drive-in south of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Yeah, maybe a half mile, maybe a mile yeah. uh, down that way. And famous for uh, pork tenderloin sandwiches that are as big as a catcher's mitt with still a itty bitty bun, but it's a, it's a tradition. Maybe the show is uh, motor, motor racing traditions. As long as we get someone else to pay for it, we should do that. I, I'm I'm not objecting. Oh, okay. I'm not objecting at all. We could actually do a book. Great motor racing meals. Oh, oh! You see now. I, I, let's see. It's been long enough that you haven't seen me in no. a in a long, long time. I have not, ladies and gentlemen. I I used to be big enough that I was being threatened with my own zip code. In, That's an understatement. Yeah, yeah I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah, maybe two zip codes a long time ago. But I still eat like I'm waiting for a, a reprieve call from the governor ah. on death row. <laughs> yeah. Great motor racing uh, meals. It's a shame that uh, Rene Dreyfus. Uh, of course, here they had, uh, here at Sequins when Joe Marchetti first started the sure. the uh, vintage. Yeah, he brought from the hotel in Chicago. He brought his the, f the very first one they had. It was one trailer with six Ferraris on the back of it, mm -hmm. and they were all his, mm -hmm. and he drove them all weekend. And that was the start of the, what is now the Brian Redman Historic Race right. Weekend, which is... Right. But the first or the second year he had it, had more cars and more people, and he brought all the staff from the Como Inn mm -hmm. with him, and they took over Sepian's Kitchen, and we ate like royal families for yes. three days and it was amazing except for pam who owned Se at the time owned right. Sepian. pam and doug yeah. she did not take being kicked out of her kitchen <laughs> so on the second night i think she went in and helped cook the pasta or something because she didn't want them taking over her restaurant which, which they did but but i mean that was just the, the first one or two of the vintage with with um Joe Marchetti were pretty incredible. Oh, they, they were. Yeah. Uh, I remember his, and in the food theme, I remember his bread van Ferrari. Uh, yes. Which was a particular. And actually on the very, the, it was, I think it was the very first one, he brought the transporter up with the six Ferraris on it. Uh -huh. The transporter broke before it even got to Plymouth. So Joe Marchetti came back into town yeah. And saw Pam, who was still fuming because he, he had <laughs> bogarted his And he kids said, I need, I need six people to drive my cars down to Chicago. The cars got to be back. Me, Laurie, Lisa. Did it, and Tristan, Barry, Tristan had to get in. And Tristan, that. I think he had already left. Oh, my God. Uh, but anyway, six of us. I drove a F-250 or something down to Chicago. I'm like 18 <laughs> years old. I'm like, it doesn't get any better than this. And then he put us in a minibus and shipped us all back up here when we took them down to Chicago. I was like, what are you doing? Oh, I'll just drive your Ferrari to Chicago. It was, it was pretty cool. Well, listen, they're, they're, giving, they're giving us the, the, this sign. Ah, yes. So I'm used to that. We should, we should, mainly from girls doing it, that. You know, actually, this is not a bad idea. You know, sometimes all it takes is the the spark of imagination uh, on a mega level. 
Yes, and, mega. Yeah. Thank you. A nice callback. Thank yeah. you very much. Well that could be a series, and uh, and we'll get that uh, sponsored by the Ozempic people for losing weight. Perhaps. Ah, I like that. Yeah. You know, we could, we could either do that. It won't be the opposite of Ozempic because we'd be putting on weight because we'd be eating. It'd be a challenge. Yes. Okay. So so then we'll get a, a health club to go along with ah, it. very good. And I'll hire a guy to do the exercises for me. If you could. That would be great. I think it's Now, fun. I have one more little story for you. Oh, okay. Just a quick thing. So Mark Baden, who you probably don't know, is the Channel 12 weatherman. No. Yeah, I, yeah, no, I don't know. Which is ABC but... in Milwaukee. Okay. And I'm just throwing this in as a tip. Because there's probably other people wondering the same as I was. Well, Mark Baden always used to do the Milwaukee weather, Green Bay weather, Racine weather. And then suddenly, Alcott Lake weather. And so the Milwaukee, Green Bay, uh, Racine, mm -hmm. and Alcott Lake, but he'd always emphasize, and Alcott Lake is going to be 70 and clear all weekend long. 70 and clear. Who got to him? Well, no <laughs> one here. I'll tell you what, so I sent Mark Baden an email. Because yeah. he had bought a Honda from us. Uh -huh. I sent him an email. I said, just curious, Mark, I've been living here for 40 years. No one's ever done the Elkhart Lake weather. And you don't do it on race weekends. So why do you do the Elkhart Lake weather? I said, oh, he said, I'm glad you noticed. He said, I bought a condo in the Ostoff. And I have a rule with my wife and kids. And if it's going to be over 60, we're going to Elkhart for the weekend. So to let them know to pack the car up. <laughs> Because I get off at five. He said, so I do the Elkhart late weather. It was they, the telegraph. They pack the bag and pack the car up. And I leave here. We go straight to, straight to the office. Get ready. We're here. going. Yeah, no, I've, I've seen him walking around town. And I'm like, ah, I know why you're here. Because, I like yeah, that. Yeah, so, I so. like that. Well, all right. Uh, we should uh, meet up here again. Do you know that there's a, the, a, the still the decal above the bar? That you put up there. That I put up there 30 five years ago the motorsport today one yeah yes uh and, and up until uh not long ago the very first decal used to be on the cash register uh -huh. on the draw but they have since gone to more advanced cash registers so it's gone but that used to be the very i think the vance and hines was the second uh, sticker that was ever put up, which was a motorbike. You know what? We could do a tour of just the decals that are on here, and probably each one has a, a pretty darn interesting story or memory. Yes. Because this is uh, the spot. And it's been great to me, and I've had 40 great years here, and you've had even more years here. Yeah. yeah. I, my, my dad brought me to my very first race here in 64. Uh, where I saw Augie Pabst and Walt Hanskin uh, drive wow. a, a 250 LM, and and it was like, yes, and I was just being it born. It was the best. And for those of you who are wondering about Pam and Doug that own, mm -hmm. or used to own, they no longer own Sequin, Pam unfortunately passed away about yeah. four years ago now, but Doug mm -hmm. lives two houses down, He's 94 years old. God bless him. And we go out for dinner every Wednesday night. Good for you. Uh, but that's the only time he goes out. It's Wednesday night. But he still he, go, he goes to breakfast every morning. Uh-huh. Uh, but he's still around. Here or varying places? For Bre breakfast? Uh, no, we go to the All Seasons Cafe, which ah, is just up okay. the road. Yeah. But Doug is still going. I wouldn't say strong, but he's still going. Good for him. So Hope he does for a long time. Yes. Guy, it's been wonderful. It was nice, good nice memories. To catch up with you. Yeah. Good, good memories, great giggles. We'll do more. Thanks so much for being with us. <laughs>